I want to thank everybody for being here. I especially want to thank uh, Dr. Lokesh Idara for organizing this very important event in commemoration with uh, Congenital Heart Disease Week, uh, July, February 7th to 14th. And uh, we have a very distinguished panel and uh, I was looking into the statistics and all that. You will be hearing a lot from our uh, esteemed panel, Dr. Srinath Redgaru and the uh, rest of the team. And uh, as you know, uh, a lot of these things start with individual uh, 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 eminent people trying to do something to change the course of the illness in the populations. And then uh, they become a part of a centers of excellence and then and they're interconnected with other centers. Finally, it becomes a movement. And uh, I think that's what we are seeing here. And uh, the pedigree of all the people here are, are very closely linked. Uh, I think Amrita Institute is one of the pioneers. And I was checking into the history of uh, uh, congenital heart disease surgery in India. And uh, some of the names that came up were all from that institute, Dr. Suresh Rao and Raman Krishna Kumar. I think they're all teachers of Srinath Reddy as well. And uh, so there are some centers of excellence and Cincinnati Children is also apparently involved very closely with that group. And uh, probably Satish might know some people from Cincinnati Children who are doing some amazing work in this connection. And as well, and uh, so we will hear a lot about it, a lot being done and a lot more needs to be done. And we'll hear all, all the statistics and all the progress and all the challenges and opportunities we still have. And uh, so each of us uh, come forward to support this. And this thing help a lot of people. This is one of the most uh, treatable situation that can make a difference right from the beginning of the life because there's a neurodevelopmental, neuro, uh, neurological changes that happen that cause permanent damage as well. So early detection, awareness and treatment and intervention can make a life better forever. So I applaud all of those pioneers and uh, people who are networking and promoting this cause to make a big difference in many, many lives as across India and across the world as well. So I uh, let the uh, moderators take over and I want to thank Dr. Surinder Narvetlagaru and Brahma Sharma for being moderators and uh, all the panelists and uh, attendees for joining this noble cause. Thank you. Thank you, Ravi. I really appreciate it. Um, um uh, this is Lokesh Idara. Um, I came to this situation. One of my friends suggested to reach out to Dr. Srinath Reddy in Tirupati. Um, his heart goes out to so many people who are um, not, children and not able to make and approach CM of Andhra Pradesh. Uh, uh, and then the, he will present the, all the project, what is the hardship, everything. And the main goal here is. Uh, we have 60,000 surgeries needed in India. So I looked at the constitution, MLA constitution, there are 3,000 some constitution. Every constitution, if they have 10 or 15 kids every year we can sponsor, it can be, it can be done. So there is a, we're connecting API and API India Foundation is connection of the noble work done across everybody in India and across the globe. This is connecting, we know a lot of other people do great job in this congenital heart itself, we're not able to bring them, uh, but we will co continuously go into each state and work with them. So I will ask Dr. Um, uh, Surendra Narvatla, uh, he's a, a renowned cardiac surgeon. Actually, he worked in pediatrics uh, surgeon initially. He will introduce Dr. Srinath Reddy. Uh, sir. Dr. Uh, Surendra, sir, please go ahead. Thank you, Lokesh. Uh, good morning to all those who are in the United States and good afternoon, good evening to all those international uh, audience on this subject. I'm Dr. Surendra Radina Rabatla. As um, Lokesh mentioned, I'm a cardiac surgeon um, practicing in Springfield, Ohio. I also trained uh, in the University of Cincinnati Children's Hospital for uh, about a an year and I practiced for about a year in the early 80s in pediatric cardiac surgery. So it's my distinct privilege to introduce Dr. K, Dr. D. Srinath Reddy, who is a cardiologist, uh, more specifically is a congenital and structural Interventional Cardiology is his specialty. He's the director of uh, Sri Padmavati Children's Heart Center, Tirupati Devasthanam in Tirupati. He has done numerous transcatheter uh, interventions in periodic um, uh, congenital heart disease, uh, more than 1,800 according to his list. 
and uh, he also started uh, three different pediatric cardiology units in different places. He's well published uh, and is a well known speaker and internationally known for his uh, philanthropy as well as hard work and innovation and technology. Again, it's my distinct pleasure and honor to introduce Dr. Srinath Reddy, pediatric cardiology. Srinath Reddy. Mute yourself, sir. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Uh, yeah, it's a great honor uh, to be associated with API and uh, giving us this opportunity to share what we are doing and what work we are doing and what needs to be done. There's not to uh, not needs to be done. So, uh, uh, as part of this congenital heart disease awareness week, uh, thank you for giving this opportunity, and uh, I am going to present what is our experience and what we have done in the last one year since we started this. So uh, good morning uh, to those in the United States and uh, good evening to those uh, in India. So this is a, uh, uh, this center, Sri Padmati Children's Heart Center, uh, <clears throat> was just was started about uh, 15 months back. And this talk is about our journey and what we have done and what we are going to do what we plan to achieve. So, <clears throat> so if you look at the problem of uh, congenital uh, uh, pediatric cardiology and cardiac surgery in India, you know the population is so vast. And as you know, one in 100 children uh, born are at risk of having a congenital heart disease. So, and out of that, one third of these children need a intervention before their first birthday. And if they don't get an intervention or a surgery before their first birthday, they would not survive. And uh, if you look at the status of uh, pediatric cardiac care in India and in an article published in 2015, you would see the number of centers uh, doing pediatric cardiac are very few and they are just uh, in few pockets. Okay, and predominantly there were more in South India and few in Maharashtra and the North India, or you can also see the line in the Eastern part of uh, uh, the country, there were not many cardiac, pediatric cardiac centers who were doing unital and, in, uh, unital and infant cardiac surgery. And coming to South, if you would look at, uh, uh, Kerala was doing extremely well. They had well distributed network of uh, 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 this thing, cardiac centers. They were they had lower neonatal and infant mortality, and Tamil Nadu also, if you see, had some uh, definitely few centers coming up. And uh, if the divided state of Andhra Pradesh didn't have any center in the year 2015, the new state, all where previously everybody had to go to Hyderabad to seek pediatric cardiac care. Especially, I would I wanted to say it's about neonatal and infant. Uh, though, as we know, Puttaparthi had uh, had a program, uh, but they had too much volumes, and uh, yeah, to do a neonatal uh, cardiac surgery was really difficult for them in that time. So that was a difficulty. But what is happening? What has happened for uh, congenital heart disease, and what has happened to the development? The other side of the spectrum, if you see, you see, we uh, we have learned that. Uh, correction or palliation is realistic for most forms of congenital heart disease in today's world. So a lot of things have changed. And we know that many patients uh, with congenital heart disease are actually best corrected early. And uh, uh, we don't see weight or, as a criteria or the child hasn't grown up. So we don't do offer surgery. That's just, that has gone back. And few congenital heart defects are best corrected in the neonatal period. I mean to say in the neonatal, be, suppose a transposition of great arteries. So you, it has to be corrected when the child is a day's baby or a coarctation of hiatal, neonatal coact. It has to be corrected then and there. Otherwise, the child is not going to make it. Okay. And also the development has become so good that the infant and neonatal cardiac surgery in the Western world, they showed the outcomes were uh, excellent. These children uh, who had uh, uh, surgery at the right time, they had excellent outcomes and there were very good results seen in these children. So these were, these were the, what was happening, but there was, uh, what was happening in the Indian situation is we knew that there uh, by the uh, total births, about 80,000 to 1 lakh children in our country uh, needed 
uh, heart surgery. But how many are getting treatment is hardly about, yeah, somewhere between 10 to 20,000. This is, I put it on a higher figure based on the uh, current uh, this thing. But the remaining about 70, 60 to 70,000 children are not getting timely treatment. So what was the reason? What was the reason if you can think is, uh, is it detection or are they not getting referred? I, we, I was just, we were just wondering about it. But what has happened of late in the last few years is the detection of congenital heart disease has come up significantly. It has increased significantly. That is basically because of uh, better uh, tools, more cardiologists coming up and all that. So detection has in increased. But the, for timely care, it was mainly the poverty uh, which was uh, actually pulling uh, these or hindering these children from getting timely treatment, actually. And also the geographic location. I've already put the map of the country and there was the centers were actually located or uh, concentrated in few areas. And uh, uh, the, the ina inadequate access to right care was not actually being there. So these were the main um, uh, reasons. Uh, for uh, the barriers for timely treatment for congenital heart disease in our country. And also, we should we we also know that, see, to start a pediatric cardiac program, it's not uh, easy. You see, unlike uh, this thing, it needs a lot of uh, infrastructure. We need quality equipment. And definitely, we need that uh, dedication as high skill among the caregivers. Okay, We need a supportive administration. If you would look at a corporate hospital in India, and uh, if you, uh, they would think of how, what would make a pediatric cardiac or how best they can do it, it is always very difficult. So, uh, for the corporate hospital to completely support a pediatric cardiac program uh, because of the complexity involved. So uh, for all this, um, uh, we thought that yeah, what we know and what we have been we have been seeing these programs, we definitely need a charitable system of care. So that uh, be it Satyasai group of uh, uh, hospitals, uh, which uh, uh, took way or uh, any other system uh, which started doing this type of uh, complex and high end work, it definitely needed a charitable system of care. Or a, or a support from the government. But uh, government had other pro, uh, priorities. As you know, they would be thinking of uh, the other uh, uh, issues or uh, other causes. But I'm sure uh, this is a time when the government also started to realize that they also need to chip in and take care of this. And that is how I guess uh, the uh, how Aishman Bharat or Ar Arogishri or all different state governments have their own schemes to support these programs are coming up. So uh, uh, after the state got divided, uh, I moved to uh, uh, Vijayawada in the year. Then there we started doing, uh, we started in a corporate hospital, set up a uh, pro uh, program for uh, treating children with congenital heart disease. Uh, we were doing about 500 to 600 uh, a year, uh, but that was not enough. There were a lot of uh, hindrances and we needed more uh, as as that program developed more and more referrals came we didn't know where to send them we couldn't say I, you sorry we, like we are uh, this is what is our capacity there were always there so uh, we kept on thinking the team were kept on thinking the uh, uh, thinking what could be what could be done that's when uh, uh, after a few years, then people started then through, I could connect to the chief minister's office and uh, I, have, uh, I could go and give him a presentation that there is a need uh, to set up a, a program, more centers for pediatric cardiac care. So that is when uh, he, the chief minister gave me an idea, okay, if you think there is a need of charitable institution, why don't you, uh, you can uh, tie up with uh, Tirmala Tirupati Devasthanam and uh, uh, try uh, and uh, set up a program. Luckily, I had a uh, executive officer who had, uh, uh, who was a uh, doctor by himself, uh, uh, who is the chief secretary now. Uh, uh, Dr. Jawhar Reddy. So he supported uh, the program and he, he handheld it and he said, okay, you get the team ready uh, and from our side, the infrastructure and all he would, the uh, Devasthanam would support. So uh, from my side, yeah, I started looking at how I could get the uh, pediatric cardiologists, cardiac surgeons. So it is not one person's uh, this thing. So it's a team job, right? So uh, it's a highly dedicated uh, job and uh, we needed a team to make it. 
so we were i was just looking at uh, people how we could do it and uh, slowly um, within a year this project we could start off it started off with about 75 beds started slowly and uh, uh, ttd in the with the SV Pranadhanam Trust, this hospital is under Pranadhanam Trust and the government would support these uh, surgeries under Arugishri. It's not so that there is a balance. The government also takes the onus and uh, the excess uh, whatever happens um, uh, is supported by Pranadhanam Trust so that even the critical of critical cases are not left out uh, uh, being treated. So that's how we started. So the the idea which when we had put it up was March 2020. Unfortunately, that's when the first wave of COVID stuck in India. So the project got delayed. But uh, within a year, uh, we could uh, convert and we could um, uh, start our OP services. Uh, and we did our first uh, cardiac surgery in uh, November 2021. Within a month, uh, uh, we could uh, do uh, we could start our cardiac surgeries. We got our cath lab. Uh, with, uh, then we started doing interventions. Within a month, in the next 2021, and within a year, by December 2022, uh, we completed thousand procedures, about 600 uh, uh, surgeries and 400. Uh, uh, device closures and interventions in this place. And we also happened to do the first uh, pediatric heart transplant um, in uh, Jan last month. So that's how the journey began and we continue to do uh, what at what we do at present is we uh, we don't refuse any patient we uh, take in all who come all forms of congenital heart disease we do the neonatal newborn cardiac surgeries because that's the need of our there are some other centers in andhra pradesh who are doing cardiac surgeries but the complex ones uh, definitely they need some support so they generally refer to us three to four centers constantly refer this newborn cardiac complex cases to us. Uh, uh, unfortunately, the acquired infective conditions like rheumatic heart disease is significantly higher in uh, Tirupati and Chitur area, which is actually very surprising, which was not there uh, either in uh, Guntur, Vijayawada, that area, or uh, in other area when, where I was trained in Kochi. That area, we hardly used to see rheumatic heart disease. We thought it's almost gone. But uh, to our surprise or to my surprise, we have acute rheumatic fevers, which is actually, I think we all have to uh, look at it and see what is the cause of, what is the cause of resurgence. We need more this thing. We also do, uh, we, this center also caters to adult congenital heart defects, uh, suppose because the expertise is a little limited uh, uh, for the complex ones. So we do accept the adult congenital heart uh, defects. We also do single ventricle uh, surgeries like Fonta and those also we do and all, all complex heart disease we do. And we have been recently uh, approved for doing a cardiac, uh, running a heart failure clinic and heart transplantation also. And uh, we are uh, lucky to start off on a positive note. If you look at our on-bed cases, as I said, uh, 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 if you compare it to other centers, ours would be a more of a referral kind. So out of the 20 beds, as you see, this was a list which was there which we can see, which was on the last week. Predominantly, we had we had done two art, neonatal arterial switch operations. We had done a, a preterm VSD closure. We had done a preterm 2 kg TAPVC, uh, total anomalous correction, a coarctation of iota repair, and two infant uh, VSDs. These were the smaller kids. And of course, we had the older, but predominantly, it is the lesser than one year of age uh, children who are uh, being referred to us of late and this thing and also the last child um, uh, he th this was a child who had acute uh, rheumatic fever with uh, acute caudal rupture who was very very sick and we had to he had arrested if he had to uh, repair uh, replace the mitral valve and uh, we he was he's actually on on the ECMO so that this is the current list of uh, the patient uh, a few patients which are there on our uh, in our ICU on the intervention front yeah we do newborn interventions preterm as you can see uh, a baby who had a very bad uh, x-ray on the right side which you say it's a 2 kg baby so like uh, it was it just had a, a large uh, patent doctor arteriosis but the child was really sick uh, instead of doing another thing you, <clears throat> we closed it uh, transcatheter and within few days 
the X-ray improve. So we have an advanced uh, or the best uh, low radiation uh, advanced equipped Philips cath lab, which is exclusive to us. And um, so uh, we do about yeah uh, every week or uh, every month about 40 to 50 transcatheter procedures as of now. We also do the adult structural interventions uh, because yeah uh, we we have one is little bit of exposure to that to that and we are more used to do the uh, manipulation of the guide wires and anatomically we are a little better so they do keep uh, getting referred to us so we do these surgeries also so our preterm uh, interventions from 1.1 kg babies to an adult sometimes when there is a need and whether uh, if a Cardio adult cardio is referred to as a structural intervention, a ruptured RSOV or a ruptured uh, ventricular um, post MIVSR ventricular uh, uh, septal rupture. Those are also life saving. Those interventions also we take up sometimes in our cath lab. Um, the success is uh, we are a team. So we do all patients are, uh, we take collective rounds. We don't divide amongst uh, ourselves. Uh, we take collective rounds in the ICU, the cardiologist, cardiac surgeon, uh, the intensivist, the, mainly the pediatricians post there, this thing. We also have, a, we started a fellowship training program, both in all the three, anesthesia, uh, pediatric cardiac anesthesia, pediatric uh, fellowship in pediatric cardiology and fellowship in uh, pediatric cardiac surgery uh, in association with SWIMS. Uh, we have the beds, bedside nurse <coughs> sorry, who, um, uh, who actually presents the case and uh, the team leader in the ICU also is there in the, in the this thing. The uh, head nurse of the whole uh, hospital, she also take, is with the nurse, the, uh, with, with us in the rounds, the respiratory therapist and the medical social worker. So we have a collective rounds every day and it's a team job. <coughs> as far as our inventory is concerned, we are lucky to have uh, good uh, supporting uh, machines like a three heart lung machine. So because we have three uh, <clears throat> operation theaters, we have two ECMO machines, one CRRT machine just in case of uh, renal failure or those uh, post-op patients. We have an exclusive cath lab, two high-end echocardiography machines and a portable machine so that we can do CAMs and also uh, TE probes. And we have our own uh, cent central sterilization department so that we don't have a cross infection with the other uh, hospitals. So uh, looking at this, yeah, the TTD officials and the government were happy with what we started off. So we put forward a proposal saying that so we needed more beds and uh, other specialties. So there is a need for uh, uh, treatment for thalassemia patient. We need a bone marrow transplant unit. Uh, there are a lot of patients. There are some patients uh, suffering from renal problems. So uh, pediatric nephrology was also needed and other gastroenterology. So they uh, agreed to our proposal when we put forward and uh, we have planned a uh, 4 lakh square feet, 350 bedded uh, pediatric super specialty hospital. The work as uh, the tender is completed and uh, the work has started. Uh, we, uh, we hope it's ready in the next uh, 12 months. So having all the other specialties of uh, this thing, uh, pediatric subspecialties right next to our hospital is thrown through a distance away from us. And we have planned it in such a way that in future, we, knew, we also have a helipad for having an air ambulance just in case in the, for transplants or any transporting of a sick patients. Sure. So this is our ICU uh, uh, with the nurses, the nurses team, the cath lab, the echo technicians team, the OR, uh, the OT complex, the all the supporting staff, uh, the fellows, the young, uh, young doctors who are always there uh, doing twice uh, uh, the night duties and round the clock covering the services. They're all young and energetic. Our team predominantly, yeah, uh, all of that, put them all together. And Dr. Ganpati, who is uh, uh, our uh, uh, pediatric uh, head cardiac surgeon, the left on top, and Dr. Dipesh Trivedi, uh, they do predominantly, they are senior and they guide the others and they take, they run, uh, they pull us, uh, pull the team together and <clears throat> uh, 
Dr. Soumya, Dr. Madhu, uh, and uh, Dr. Abhinav, they are all young uh, cardiologists, anesthetists, cardiac surgeon who uh, binds uh, and uh, keeps giving us the adrenaline for to the older uh, people and catch the juniors okay. also. Uh, we are a team, so the uh, gradually people have uh, one and uh, next one on one, they have joined us and the team is growing and we are able to do better Thanks. this thing. Yeah. Yeah, and we have few uh, uh, few eminent people visiting us, philanthropists like Dr. Sudha Murthy. She came and she has visited and she has uh, uh, promised to build a patient uh, outreach child tree for then um, the chairman, Pratap Sireddy of Apollo Hospitals. He donated the ECMO machines and machines required for heart transplant. A uh, few machines, high-end machines, which we did once on their own. They just saw the unit and they have just donated. So, uh, concluding, most of the uh, at the time on the day when they go back, go uh, home, uh, the patients uh, on that day, yeah, after they they would generally take a group photo and share, irrespective of religion or this thing, any caste, uh, the devasthanam support everybody, and uh, whoever comes uh, is offered uh, uh, treatment uh, for congenital heart disease. So, as of now, we have uh, done thousand plus. Uh, 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 procedures in the last about 14 15 months since we have started uh, we are thankful and uh, with the blessings of lord venkateshwara uh, the program is uh, running uh, well and we have been uh, <clears throat> successfully treating a lot of patients uh, with a re very good uh, success rate with the blessings of uh, uh, the lord venkateshwara our success rate is uh, as good as one of uh, any centers reasonable centers uh, in uh, in the west with the um, success rate of more than 96%, taking up all the complex cases. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Sinaradi, sir. Really, really doing the God's work. So we have no words. Um, so I will move on to the um, next speaker. Uh, um, I'm going to introduce uh, Dr. Um, um, M. Srihari, sir, he's from Kerala State Child Health. He's a medical graduate with more than 15 years of community experience in the public health. He's a state nurdal officer in the National Health Mission. And he conceptualized, implemented Rudayam for Little Hearts, a highly successful pro project, an initiative of government of Kerala State, improving access care for children of CHD. And he played a really, uh, leading role of pulse ox for every newborn screening. Uh, in the state of Kerala. So um, he worked as state um, RMNCH plus a, a consultant, UNICEF, Kerala from December 15th to 27th. He's a district program manager from 2010 to 2015. He, he's a chief of Chief Minister Award Kerala for the best citizen serv service delivery system for the Hurdayam for Little Hearts uh, in the year 2018 to 2019. E Governor's Award for best citizen service delivery system in 2018 to for Hrudiyam for Little Hearts program. Um, we'll hear from him. Uh, sir, uh, doctor, can you, doctor? Sir. Yep. Yes, sir. Oh, awesome. Thank you. Uh, can you hear me? Yeah, yes, sir. You can share the screen too. I will make you co host. Uh, Thank you. Yeah, I think you can try to co uh, see. Yeah. Um, yes. Whether you can go ahead. Can you um, see whether you can see? Yeah, good. Oh. Am I audible? Yes, sir. Go ahead, sir. Thank you so much for coming. Appreciate it, sir. Yeah. Thank you, uh, APA, for uh, inviting me for this uh, uh, wonderful program. And uh, it's a privilege. Uh, uh, so, uh, Dr. Srinath Reddy has already uh, set the platform and he was talking about uh, the need for infant surgeries and that is what uh, uh, we tried and he was talking about uh, uh, the difficulties for any government to chip in uh, chip into the pediatric cardiac arena uh, trying to save uh, infants or neonates. Yeah, it is true. Even in India, uh, even in today in India, uh, pediatric cardiac surgery and pediatric cardiology is uh, a matter of passion and commitment uh, from the side of uh, pediatric cardiologists. That is what we are seeing. 
and even though there are uh, multiple corporate institutions uh, uh, in India operating, um, that is not going to make much difference uh, if government is not going to chip in. So that is the point uh, uh, the government of Kerala has uh, uh, thought about investing in uh, pediatric cardiac surgeries. Uh, we had a reason for this, for it, and I'll be talking about it. And uh, we have developed a program. Uh, maybe uh, I'm not saying it is a total end to end solution, but we try to involve everything, incorporate all the possible uh, aspects, and still uh, we are uh, developing from uh, the point every day. Uh, so we, we put the name Hridayam for Little Hearts. Uh, um, that is uh, the program name, and we started in 2017. Uh, the first case was operated in 2017 August. Um, so, so as we know, um, India has improved a lot, uh, especially with regard to the infant mortality. We are uh, uh, trying to reach our uh, SDG target. Uh, still, we are reducing. Uh, but Kerala was a forerunner, as all of us know. Uh, our IMR was uh, infant mortality rate was 12, even in 20, uh, 2000. Uh, so, but it was stagnant for uh, 15, more than 15 years. Uh, it was 12 from 2000 uh, to 2015. And uh, the political leadership and the administrators uh, started asking the question, why it is not reducing? And the technocrats like uh, me had to give a lot of explanation. And we were asked to uh, come up with something or uh, tell the reason why. Uh, so uh, that is where we looked at the uh, infant mortality rate in a, a very, a very purposeful way. And we found that uh, our infant mortality was due to mostly due to prematurity, both asphyxia and uh, and the leading one of the leading causes was congenital anomalies. So out of the congenital anomalies, more than 60 percent, 54 to 60 percent, they are due to congenital heart diseases. So we were able to uh, tell the administration and the political leadership that if you want to uh, improve further uh, on your infant mortality, uh, you will have to work around uh, congenital anomalies, especially uh, among the congenital anomalies, congenital heart disease was found to be the low-hanging fruit. And it was long hanging only because we had a, a legacy of having some institutions uh, like uh, Sri Jitra Dhirunad Institute uh, in the southern part of our state at Randrum and uh, some private sector institutions, the major contributor like Amrita Institute of Medical Science in Cochin. And there were uh, uh, some other uh, other uh, private institutions who were able to, who will be also uh, can a major uh, player in our program. So that was the decision that we took. Uh, and we just uh, analyzed what is our uh, the entire scenario uh, in the state. We found that uh, we know that um, we have around uh, uh, half a million birth every year. Out of that, we are going to have around uh, 4,000 cases. And out of that, 25% or maybe 30% is max maximum need uh, surgery in the first one year. And we found that uh, at that time, we were operating around uh, 500 plus cases. Out of that 300, maybe 500 cases were operated by Sri Jitra even at that time. But out of that, there are around 200 cases from other states. And uh, we were getting around 300 cases. Out of the 300, uh, Sri Jitra was operating around 200 uh, infant cases. And the uh, institutions like Amrita and other institutions, uh, they were operating around 100 cases. Um, we, we, uh, we found that uh, the, 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 the institutions all together, uh, the centers at that time, we had around uh, four institutions plus two uh, uh, government medical colleges started doing cases. Altogether, they can operate uh, around 100, uh, 10 cases per day uh, in, in a single pool. And uh, the limiting factor was money. Uh, people are unable to pay, uh, uh, the pay money in, uh, in private sector hospitals. And uh, the government decided to call for a meeting of all the all the hospitals who are operating, and they were very generous. Um, again, I must say that uh, it was the the commitment of uh, the pediatric cardiologist and pediatric cardiac team uh, uh, that was that was instrumental. And they were all they were all there present in the meeting. And uh, uh, the only thing they asked uh, uh, was uh, uh, for a, for a government investment. Uh, and there was a program, uh, even still there is a program in India, uh, which is called Rashtriya Bansasya Karikram, RBSK, uh, which has a provision uh, 
to to uh, reimburse for uh, the the surgical cost uh, if if preferred in that scheme. Uh, but uh, the money that is uh, reimbursing is not that high. Uh, but um, that is that is a good sum anyway. And the hospitals were ready to accept that uh, sum, and and they we we started uh, uh, the program. So when we designed the program, uh, we thought uh, we'll have something like this: uh, a patient care continuum uh, will be established. So that starts from uh, uh, recognition of case, then uh, the confirmation of diagnosis, and we need definitely prioritize because we had at that even at that time and even today we have a backlog. Uh, the the older children ASDs and others are uh, still there are cases waiting, and uh, we need to have proper referral. Uh, Kerala is a state uh, which is spread in a length um, of uh, around 900 kilometers uh, from south to north, uh, and if a case uh, needs to be referred from uh, the northern part of Kerala to the Sri Jitra, uh, it was very tough. Uh, in 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 a population density of more than uh, 800 in 900 per uh, square kilometer uh, and the very high traffic and very narrow roads it is very tough so uh, we thought we need to have a, a proper referral system and stabilization uh, needs to be done uh, that is again the trend every time when you have a case uh, if it is diagnosed to have a critical congenital heart disease yeah you need to shunt it out uh, immediately you need to transfer out that was uh, the way people are uh, uh, people were doing, and we we had we took almost a year to teach all our pediatricians or maybe the the major hospitals to keep the baby there, stabilize them. We will take care of it. So that is the assurance that we give, and of course the treatment part, and uh, that is that there comes it is the free treatment, uh, whether it's an intervention or maybe a surgery. Uh, we identified that uh, uh, by by surgery alone, uh, or maybe the the treatment that we are giving, uh, that is not going to solve our uh, uh, problem. Uh, we thought we need we identified that we need a strong follow up, especially a community level follow up program. In the recognition part, uh, uh, we we understood that definitely we need to have uh, a, an antenatal uh, screening program. Uh, for that, again, uh, we, we trained our obstetricians and the radiologists to do a fetal heart screening. Um, because as uh, uh, Dr. Srinivas was pointing out, uh, there are there are uh, cases uh, like TGA with intact ventricular septum, or maybe it's very complex disease conditions that, that uh, we may not get time to uh, refer. Um, or, or they may not get time to reach a hospital. Uh, so so we, don't, we need to identify the cases early and uh, in neutral transport uh, to these centers, make the delivery possible there and take the baby for surgery in the first maybe two hours or three hours or maybe doing a pass. So whatever it be, those sort of things we decided. We decided to go for universal pulse oximetry. That is uh, again, uh, the suggestion from the, uh, the, the experts uh, that we had, the pediatric cardiologist. And I'm fortunate to have a, a, a US based uh, NGO, Children's Heart Link. Uh, they were partnered with us. Uh, through Amrita Institute of uh, Medical Sciences. Uh, we did, did a lot of training. All these uh, hospitals, all these people uh, helped us in developing uh, uh, a transport protocol, a stabilization protocol. Uh, so then uh, the major challenge was how to prioritize the case. So uh, again, uh, that we devised a protocol uh, and, and took the consensus statement that uh, the pediatric cardiac, cardiologists and pediatric cardiac surgeons uh, um, put up in India. So uh, all these things were adapted and uh, the, the patient care continuum uh, was the backbone of our program. Uh, we stick on to this still. Uh, this, is, this is the Bible that we have. Uh, so 2018, we started the pulse oximetry. Uh, we, we were doing all these newborn screening even from 2012, uh, being a state with the lowest IMR. Uh, we every time we were uh, looking at the quality of life as a uh, as a parameter for newborn survival and, and newborn uh, survival. So uh, then, uh, in later phase, we identified that pulse oximetry alone is not going to make uh, uh, our, our task easy, and we we introduced a, a protocol for uh, physical examination, focus physical examination. Uh, that is a, a CVS focus physical examination. We again developed a protocol for that and introduced that along with the pulse oximetry and that improved our uh, uh, 
sensitivity for identifying uh, almost all the uh, all the uh, congenital heart diseases. Um, so this is the way that we do. We we have hundred uh, government uh, delivery points, uh, and all of them uh, do uh, the pulse oximetry screening and physical examination. And by the end of the day, uh, uh, all these data will be uploaded to the server and, and uh, uh, give alerts uh, to the concerned stakeholders, uh, so that um, there are um, n number of uh, um, uh, pulse ox fail cases that needs to be uh, taken for echo or maybe uh, the physical examination somebody needs to see and how many are seen, how many uh, echo are done, how many new cases are registered, all these things are digitally uh, documented. And this is the, the flow chart that we follow uh, for the program. Uh, we have uh, this, the left side, you can see the pillars, uh, the cases can be registered in the web portal. The web portal is healthim.kerala.go.in. Uh, uh, public can register, the physicians can register, the nurse can register, uh, who wants somebody identifies a case can register. Basic information, if uh, the input is given, then the, the intimation will go to the district early intervention center. Uh, we have 14 districts and all 14 districts have a district early intervention center. That is again another structure under the RBS scheme. So uh, they will check whether all the information are there. Uh, we need basic information, uh, some echo findings, all these things. If, if they are available, uh, then they will verify the case and it will go to a panel of uh, pediatric cardiologists and pediatric cardiac surgeon. They will give an opinion. Uh, that basically uh, prioritize the case. So something like uh, uh, we have a categorization, category one, two, three. Uh, category one means that needs to be uh, operated in the first, in the next six months. So whenever the case registered, uh, say like um, a VSD is registered at three months. So nowadays we operate uh, all those VSDs requiring surgery before six months. Uh, we won't uh, allow that uh, VSDs to wait beyond six months. So that will be one F. Uh, so similarly, there is a protocol we have and accordingly the, the, the treatment plan will be put. It will be open to all the private hospitals or, or all the internal hospitals, including Sri Jitra and uh, the, the government hospitals who are operating. And, and once they put the date, uh, it will be uh, it, it will be alerted to the family. They can choose uh, which hospital they would like to go. Uh, they will they need to give a consent so that the consent is attached and the, the case will be alert, alerted to uh, the, the empanel hospital. The patient can walk in, uh, they can go to the hospital, get treatment, and they can go back. And the hospital will be uh, submitting the bill to the government, uh, the districts, and the DACs will make, it, make the payment to the hospital. So this is a system that we follow. Immediately on uh, discharge, uh, the details needs to be entered uh, by the hospital so that the community level nurse, uh, we have uh, the nurses, we have RBSK nurses in all the Grama Panjayat. So uh, uh, one Grama Panjayat uh, corresponds to around 30,000 population. So we have a nurse in all Panjayat. She will get an alert that uh, one, one of your kids, one of, your, one of the child from your area is operated or maybe an intervention done and discharged. So uh, there is a protocol uh, device for follow-up. Uh, the, the first follow-up will be on the, the third day of discharge, then 7th and 15th. And 30th day, the, the family will have to go back to the hospital and there will be follow-up protocol for individual cases thereafter, uh, according to the, uh, the condition. So this is the way that uh, the program is managed. And uh, you can see the numbers uh, uh, every year that the cases, uh, the 2017, August only we started, that's why we had around 493 cases. So last year you can see there are around 4,700 uh, cases registered in the system. Now we encourage everybody to register all the cases, uh, whatever it be, if it's a, even if it's a small ASD, we are registering. Uh, uh, this is, now this becomes a registry, sort of uh, a kind of uh, registry. and the prioritization happens and so we don't worry about uh, uh, all the cases getting registered uh, these are the 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 type of the like uh, the the day based cases they less than 30 days that also you can see uh, tremendous increase in the number of cases uh, the most of the newborn cases are identified in the newborn period itself at least the the maximum number of cases in 2022 you can see uh, almost uh, 3300 cases are registered in the first year itself and uh, uh, this helps a lot in uh, uh, saving a lot of life, uh, especially those cases usually we miss uh, or uh, we may not identify and that the child may die uh, even before getting diagnosed. So, so this is the strategy that we have adopted. 
the cases operated, yeah, that also you can see the numbers are increasing every year. Um, uh, 2021, we actually there was a backlog for 2020 due to COVID, and uh, and 2022 you can see almost uh, 1,250 cases um, uh, either operated or intervened. Uh, most of the cases are usually uh, in the in the in the first year of uh, life. Uh, most of the cases are uh, the many like the maximum numbers are done by the uh, Amrita Institute of Medical Sciences and uh, uh, the the one from uh, Calicut, uh, the MIMS uh, from Calicut, because we have maximum number of cases from Northern Kerala, the Malabar. So and Sri Jitra, of course, uh, operates a lot of cases nowadays. And in between, uh, they were not part of uh, the program. Uh, uh, due to some administrative issues, uh, and that's why uh, you, you can see that there was less number of cases in 2022. Uh, so this is the the neonatal cases uh, uh, done uh, every year. We have uh, almost same number of uh, neonatal cases operated, um, and uh, uh, we have a follow-up program uh, for both the pre-surgical cases and post-surgical cases. In the first and second year, we found that um, even though the cases are getting registered, um, uh, we missed uh, or maybe some of those children, uh, children die uh, before getting operated. So that's why we thought we need to have a pre-surgical uh, uh, follow-up program as well. And of course, the post-surgical uh, uh, follow-up program. And this has improved the survival, uh, the, the post-surgical uh, sur the, the post uh, follow program uh, has definitely has improved the survival uh, and uh, almost all, all these children uh, operated or maybe registered are on a monthly or maybe bi-monthly follow-up uh, with our RBSK nurses and in the health system. So uh, this, when we started, we never thought of uh, making it as a registry. Now it's like a, a web-based registry. Uh, we know how many cases uh, are coming from uh, which all part of our state, what type of cases are getting registered at what point. And, and this, this gives a lot of uh, information for us uh, for, as a public health program uh, to improve on uh, uh, the steps, what we need to take. Uh, this is, of course, cashless. Uh, this is one of the challenges. And we don't, we don't consider whether they are BPL or APL. Uh, we, we consider them all as uh, children with congenital heart disease. Um, uh, and and this is so that is another important aspect uh, and this is of course uh, a, a first of its kind there were multiple programs in india uh, the the cashless schemes the insurance programs different things came uh, but uh, we have a comprehensive approach starting from diagnosis even in the antenatal uh, screening program there is a, there is a provision for uh, antenatally detected cases can be uh, registered in the system so uh, another important thing that this program would not have been possible if uh, the, the private sector, the, the, even the corporate hospitals, uh, they were all uh, uh, part of, they are all part of the program. They were all uh, uh, ready to come up, uh, join hands and made the, all the surgical slot available in Kerala in a single pool. So uh, that is actually the, the success of the program. Uh, I must appreciate uh, uh, the way that uh, individual institutions and, and the team uh, and their work for us. So uh, these are all like uh, another major important thing is that uh, we were able to make sure that uh, there is a, a definite time period where I, I can say that once you are registered, uh, your child is going to get operated or maybe if your child uh, uh, will have an intervention by this day. So an ASD uh, registered at one and a half years, if they need an intervention, uh, we'll be saying that yeah, you will be, uh, you will, you will get it done uh, before five years, and now there is a definite period for every case, every case registered in the system. So yeah, this is all about our program. Uh, this is possible only only uh, with the high level uh, political commitment and uh, administrative support. Um, the the exports. Uh, all across the state, uh, whether it is the, the government institutions or the private institution, they are all part of uh, developing it and uh, guiding us in improving on a daily basis. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Sihar, sir. A really amazing job, amazing work. We can't wait. Uh, that's our purpose of the talk today, uh, to spread our noble work by noble people and uh, noble causes. Thank you so much, sir. I really, Thank really you. appreciate it.
and we like to reach out all the doctors but i am able to uh, working and connecting even reaching out to you it's amazing work i talked to all my kerala friends in america i couldn't able to reach so i have connection in emergency medicine in uh, uh, chandni madam gave your number that's how i able to reach and i saw a comment here that from kerala no no about your project so so we did a great thing communicating is a community it is a persons if uh, every citizen in india if they contribute 10 rupees all the problem will solve so i calculated that too if you come at mla constitution there are 3000 plus every mla constitution they have 10 surgeries a year if they are the owner of the mla or ima or people or foundation the problem will solve in no time so in this meeting about together greatness not this we have been all other things rp rp india foundation job thanks sir uh, next speaker uh, dr brahma sharma sir can you introduce um, um, dr um, praveen sir about um, they have four hospital running um such as I, I think they have more than four thank you lokesh am i audible yes very well yeah good morning uh, thank you lokesh for getting involved in such a noble project um i have to say dr srihari your template is the best model for india i'm so impressed and humbled um coming to the third speaker uh by the way i'm a, a cardiologist a certified international cardiologist i don't do pediatric intervention i'm in pittsburgh uh, now working at the VA hospital, but I have a very good relations with the Pediatric Children Hospital in Pittsburgh, which you know is one of the best in the country. And just, just on the side, I have been going to India for the last 30 years off and on to Satya Sai Baba Hospital in Bangalore and Puttaparthi, and I have seen excellent work there, free of hospital, Dr. Das, Dr. Ayer, Dr. Rao, Dr. Desai. So more about that later, but let me introduce our third speaker, Dr. Kolipura Praveen, he's a hematology oncologist from Fort Wayne, Indiana, which is like a second home to me. My brother-in-law, Manish Sharma, and my good friend Ravi Batina used to be there. He is very much involved in philanthropy and has been a trustee of the H2H Foundation that we all know, Heart to Heart Foundation, under the directorship of the legendary Sunil Gavaskar. And... Uh, he also has been working with Sri Srinivas, whom I know personally, because previously he was at Satya Hospitals in Puttaparthi, and now they have Sanjeevni Hospital, Satya Sanjeevni Hospital, excellent role model for care. I'm very excited and very um, pleased and uh, actually privileged to introduce him to hear his contribution to this noble cause. Dr. Kolipura? Yeah. First of all, I just wanted to thank you. Thank you, Dr. Sharma, for the kind introduction. And uh, at the outset, I would just, first of all, I want to compliment Dr. Lokesh Edara, sir, uh, who has put all this program together. And uh, he was quite persistent. And I was trying to escape from this thing. I said, I'm a hematologist, oncologist. How can I share the platform with the uh, stalwarts like Dr. Srihari Reddy and doc, Dr. Srinath Reddy and Dr. Srihari? He said, just come on and please do share what work is being done. So also I'm thankful and grateful to RP leaders and RP foundation who really supported Sanjeevini hospitals. And last year they really support during the COVID time, they had partially supported the oxygen plant and they were generous enough to give the biochemical analyzers and also for the PPP equipment, et cetera. Also the, in uh, going, uh, in the near future, they have committed that they would be helping us with some ventilators. Uh, uh, thank you, Dr. Janalagatla and the RP team for doing that. Having said that, uh, sir, you have the slides. I'll try to, in lieu of the time, I'll try to quickly go through it. And I can make this thing a little bit more informal and to give more question and answer time. So let's go start with the first slides. Can you see, sir? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah I can see that. Yeah, so um, basically, uh, just not through the slide, but I'll give you a background as to how it all started. And luckily, Dr. Sharma is also involved. Based at Sanjeevini Hospital, this is a, it is run by Satya Sai Health and Education Trust, and which was uh, founded in 1971. And the chairman, uh, Dr. C. Srinivas, who actually was involved very closely with the uh, Swami, Satya Sai Baba, he was on the trust and later on in 2012, after uh, looking into all, uh, he wanted to do something, uh, uh, challenge, some work, 
and he identified this uh, as a pediatric uh, congenital heart disease uh, is a is been a burden and so uh, he decided to build the uh, satyasa health and education trust decided to uh, build uh, uh, the first and has built the first center in uh, nayaraipur in chatisgarh and now the game plan to is to totally the plan of uh, his vision is to start five hospitals in india and already three are in place and functioning actively first was in raipur second being at palwal haryana third is in uh, navi mumbai kargar navi mumbai and the fourth which is uh, already the construction is actively going on it is going to be opened in uh, telangana so uh, the, the and also there are four hospitals outside the country have been planned one already has been started, done in fiji and one is being also opened in sri lanka and there are plans to open one in africa and uh, in the long run they're also planning to do something in mississippi uh, over here now not only that uh, um, he, the, with the, the sanjivini hospitals there so far i think the statistics i don't i think i don't think i can go into the details of those statistics because one second can i can't see this thing okay 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 so uh, the thing about uh, this hospital totally the philosophy the chairman always believes in uh, uh, the health is a privilege for everybody and uh, so based on his guru and uh, he was a good big follower of uh, satya sai baba he said that the so the all the services which are being rendered in this hospital will be totally free of cost and uh, as you know it has been a challenging to all of us know that and first time when i was i heard about it i was skeptical about it and thought about how this will really even survive so because obviously i had this discussion with him and he says it all the faith and also it will run and probably he had lots of, lots of faith in this thing and i was really surprised and i got involved first in 2017 when i was spontaneous i didn't know when i was when visited raipur hospital and i was impressed with the infrastructure and at that point i wanted to think there was when when i round thought I, i saw there was no cardiac cath lab over there and so we decided to the first project i i worked with him and through rotary global grant and we had put a uh, uh, cath lab over there since then i've been very much deeply involved and uh, so i was asked to become a trustee uh, of uh, heart heart to heart foundation the way it works is satya sai health and education trust they provide the infrastructure and a hwh foundation was formed in order to just support for all the uh, financial support is being given and hwh foundation as uh, uh, raises the money 